therein lies the road to war. Because those voices don't speak for the rest of us. You and I know and do not believe that life is so dear and peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery. Or that Moses had told the children of Israel to live in slavery under the Pharaoh. But Christ have reduced the cross. Should the patriots at Concord Bridge have thrown down their guns and refused to fire the shotters around the world? The martyrs of history were not And our honored dead gave their lives to stop the advance of the Nazis didn't die in vain. Where then is the road to peace? It's a simple answer after all. You and I have the courage to say to our enemies, there is a price we will not... Hello there. I just finished the English subtitle for the second part of this movie. This movie is almost 40 years old, but it seems to be highly relevant today, at least to me. But I guess the story is as old as authority. So, well, without further ado, let's get into the second part, and it starts with a little recap from the from the first part. So enjoy, and God bless you. bara 50 meter längre att gå. 100 då. Ja men 100 meter. Ja, inte det. Det här ska ingen komma och diktera för mig. Det ska du vara klar. Inte pengar det gäller. Vad gäller det då? Ja, vad det gäller. Det gäller ju allting. Det gäller ju alltihop. Vad då alltihopa? Alltihopa, allting. Nu kör jag över den imorgon då. Bygger vi nu? Men vilket är snart slut, ja. Såg en minut. Man har ingen rätt att röra våran mjölkpall. Ingen som helst rätt. Du bryter mot förordningen, Lund. Man kommer ju överens om att byta ut alla mjölkpallar mot en gemensam. Vilka kommer överens? Ja, det var vägförvaltningen i mjölkcentralen. Frågar de oss? Nej! Flytta på regeln! Jag snyfte en väckte! Försök med det nu. Ska du få Domänverkets stämpel bakom örat? Om inte mjölkbilen stannar då? Ja, då blir det separatorn.
sitter ni och er egen ägandes fall så att säga. Ja, det är bara att förbjuda dig på kaffe. Bara därför. Det är inget annat. Ja! Får inte om tanken. Får väl inte obehag nu då? Gott kaffe, Lina. Ja, här har vi alltså föremål till fråga. Helt olagligt. Och alldeles nybyggt var det verkar. Lagrummet är paragraf 39. Momenten 16-18, lokala byggnadsstadgan. Föremålet får lagligen avlägsnas. Har hon med föremålet att skaffa? Hon är frun. Jaha, ja. Är maken hemma? Han är i skogen. Jag vaktar åt den. Så frun kanske förstår så det är ett lagbrott som er make begår. Men jag ska se mellan fingrarna för den här gången. Men upprepas det, då blir det vitusföreläggande. Böter. Dryga böter. Ja, så vill hon flytta sig nu då. Ja, vill hon flytta sig? Ja. Snälla frun, flytta sig. Jag sitter här. Det är våran mjölkpall. Flytta sig, människa! Flytta henne! Och fördärva virket. Förbannat onödigt. Så gå upp det till vedort här nåt mer så nu. Ja, 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 det ordnar vi. Persson! Säg nu till maken att det får vara slut på såna här tilltag. En gång för alla. Och vedor ska få huggen och gratis hemkört. Jag vill inte ha någon mer av er. 
Vad kommer ni in på gården så släpper jag loss hund! Jävla tjafs! Han sa ingen mer om böterna. Hur pass dryga de kan bli? Det är inte så, Egon. Det är ju fan att rättvisa ska kosta pengar. Det kommer nog på något. Som det inte är böter på. Egon. saken i styrelsen. Jag kommer fram till att det, det faktiskt har förekommit en viss orättvisa. Så trots det eniga... Varsågod, ta en kaka till. De är hembakta. Tackar som ljus. Tackar, tackar. Trots det eniga beslutet så kan man ju inte bestrida att eh, Lundin eh, har fått en eh, längre transportväg till den centrala upphämtningsplatsen än andra i byn. Så därför erbjuder mjölkföreningen ett extra påslag. Ett halvt år mer per kilo. Vad säger Lundin om det?
all that you live for. For a day, I dare you share our love. Can we dance? You are the song of the year. The end I have reached. The end I have reached. Ska vi gå ut? Låter du bli Egons mjölkpall? Vad ja, fan har Egons mjölkpall med oss att göra? Låter du bli den då? Vad har hans mjölkpall med oss att göra? Låter du bli den då? Det är vägans sak. Det är han som bestämmer. Jag bara kör. Så du ska på den igen då? Då så. Får jag tillbaka min? Får jag tillbaka den? För Egons mjölkpall. Det är inte bara för Egons mjölkpall. Få tillbaka den. Behåll den då. Vad bra med Egons mjölkpall som man fick se i tid. Var du? Och för det. Ringa polisen. Vi bygger en ny va? Egon. Vi är nog någon ro med det. Skulle du kunna tänka dig att bli vägförman? Skulle du kunna hjälpa in dig på några kurser? Nu ska jag säga annat än att vägförvaltningen tar vara på sina begåvningar. Jag kan väl tänka på saken.
I sit here and I think all by myself. I think that some of you, when you see our little podcast or whatever you call it, might be annoyed and go, well, it's easy for you to say, sit there in Sweden and talk about freedom. And you're absolutely right. It is easy for me to say. And I would like it to remain that way. That's why I do what I do. I mean, as it says in the Bible, you have not yet fought even until blood against sin. And I have not fought until blood against tyranny. That's true. Have you ever heard people say, it's not that bad yet? I think that's revealing. It's like deep in your heart, you know where it's going if you don't if you don't like change the direction uh, no sane person goes into the gym for the first time goes past all those little uh, like dumbbells and and uh, says now i'm saving my strength for that big one down there doesn't work that way so if if I find it hard to speak my thoughts and stand up for my faith or whatever, when I can do it, it's stupid to assume that it will all of a sudden be easy when I can't. So that's, that's why we do what we do. You don't, you don't go to a hill and start rolling down and then you say, well, it's not that steep yet. As soon as you give politicians power, any kind of power that didn't exist previously, if they can figure out a way to force you into carrying something that lets you enter businesses or lets you do this or lets businesses open, historically, they are not going to give that power up. They find new reasons to use. I'll be back. We have to protect those freedoms at all costs, whether you agree with people's choices or not, because it is the foundation that this country was founded on. Freedom. This idea of freedom, there's so many people that think it's frivolous, it's not important, it's not the main thing that we should be focused on, but it is the literal structure that allows this country to be so fucking amazing. Every single country that's ever existed other than the United States, up until 1776, every fucking country that has ever existed was run by dictators, all of them. This is the first experiment in self-government that actually worked, and it created the greatest superpower the world's ever known. It created the greatest cultural machine, the greatest machine of art and creativity and innovation right fucking here. And how did it do that? It did it through freedom. And as soon as you see something, anything, that comes along and inhibits your freedom, you should be very cautious of that thing. You should be very suspicious. Because anything that comes along that can inhibit your freedom is, by definition, anti-American. Well, um, that there was a pretty powerful second part to the first part. Uh, I think we can all agree that one thing that came out of that was that it goes back to that old adage, uh, power, ultimate power corrupts. And I think this is one thing that I really, I really take away from this that no matter how much you give up with your freedoms and everything, there will be no end. And with this, one thing was evident. No, no matter how much you try and protect and hold on to and fight for what is right, which is your responsibility, by the way, uh, it, it really comes back to this thing, no matter how much you fight and remain steadfast and stand on your beliefs, they're going to come after you. And uh, this first, while the first part it was all about, you know, freedoms and protecting your rights, this second part was really about remaining steadfast and showing solidarity with those who are going through this and 
that was evident right throughout. Uh, you know, we had this, uh, it happened twice in this. So when the bulldozer came through and it picked up his, um, his little uh, milk table there, the look of horror on everyone's face that they were going to this length just to get rid of uh, this lump of wood, pretty much. It, it really was such a shameful thing. Uh, second time around, when things didn't, you know, things got rebuilt again and everyone had a good old laugh over that. Um, no, of course the authorities didn't like that, so what do they do? They go and torch it. You know, uh, if, it's, if it doesn't go their way, they'll just burn it to the ground. Same goes for government these days. If uh, things don't go their way, they'll torch things to the ground on their way out. Uh, it, it kind of really got summarised, really. Uh, when he was sitting in bed there with his wife and they made this comment, uh, they said, I wrote it down, he says, uh, it's a darn shame, justice ain't free. You know, when we look at the issue of justice and injustice in the world and you want to see righteous justice carried out, it costs everything. It costs everything literally your livelihood it costs everything that you own it costs more than that it also it costs your integrity a lot of the times your your character gets thrown through the mud for standing up for something you believe in but yeah she's damn right justice ain't free justice costs everything it comes as a sacrifice uh, one thing that really also uh, really blew my mind watching this second scene was when um there was that scene in the car where the the uh, woman there was saying to him so what are you going to do with his um milk table are you going to are you going to leave it or are you going to tear it down again if so i don't like what you're doing to him and he didn't like that and she he just wanted to carry on with the night as though nothing had gone wrong he, he wanted his woman that was it uh, the thing with the presses is that they can't always hide their lies. They can't always hide their evil. And when it's exposed, it's exposed for the whole world to see. People start to wake up. They start to look at these things and they start to think everything they're saying isn't true. This is why when I look around the world at the moment and people begin to panic and they begin to worry and they say, oh, I wish people would just look at the news and look at what's really going on. I'm not so worried. The reason why is oppressors usually eat themselves first and they always fall by their own standards and everyone around them begins to crumble. So for the theme of this second part, if justice ain't free and it costs you everything, what are you willing to sacrifice to stand true to what you believe in you know if we're to stand for something more than ever it's going to come as, as a sacrifice and it's going to come as painful for many but we've got to be willing to be the ones that no matter what keep building that table keep building it keep building it no matter how many times they knock it down keep building it and you watch the people surrounding the oppressors they will flee
I just got done with part two of uh, Midwinter Duel, and uh, it, it's becoming more and more powerful with every section that I see. A um, couple of quick thoughts. Uh, the thing that stood out to me the most of that of that uh, of this section of the movie, uh, surprisingly, was uh, the woman at the dance. Um, and this man comes in, you know, and, and, and finds her. And she's visibly upset with him and doesn't want him around. And you're like, what's going on here? It's like, oh, let's go outside. And she asks him, will you... And you eventually come to find out that this, the guy um, you remember is the guy who is on the road crew that is, I guess, running the, uh, the loader that's uh, destroying Egon's milk table. And she asks him, will you leave it alone? And he's like, I don't understand. She's, no, will you leave it alone? He's like, this is ridiculous. And so she takes her ring off and gives it back and said, basically says, I'm done. And, her, and she says that, thank God for Egon's milk table so that I could find out the person who you really are now before it was too late. That really spoke to me um, just in that little section because it was kind of like, you know, it is the little things in life that show you where people stand. Um you know, and it's becoming, it was little things, and now it's becoming big things. To some people, they might be little, but you know, in all reality, um, like he said on the first part, it's all of everything. It all matters. Everything matters. If you, if you let them, ha if, you, if you stand this way for something that is supposed to be little, you know, it reminds me of what Jesus talked about, where, you know, if you're, if you can be trusted with a little, you can be trusted with a lot. And if you can't be trusted with a little, then you cannot be trusted with a lot. Um, you know, your character shines through. Um, and we're finding that a lot nowadays with, with people. And it is tough to know that sometimes people end up not where you think that they would. Um, but you... No, there's also grace. Um, but I thought it was really cool when you come to find out that the neighbors are starting to get in on it now and helping him rebuild this table. And they're building it bigger and nicer. And it's like, okay, you knock down this one, we're going to build it again. And you knock it down, we're going to build it even bigger. And we're just going to keep building it bigger and bigger. You know? And and then now you know, everybody's finally starting to see what's going on because now those guys who took the time to build it for Egon, now their work's been destroyed. And so it's not just this one guy by himself. Now it's becoming the whole community and you can tell the, the, the mood is shifting to where everything's going to be. The community comes together and realizes that it's not just his problem over there. It's all of our problems. Um, you know, if they, can, if they can do this, to, if they don't ask you about your milk table, they won't ask you when they go to cut off your balls. And uh, so, I, uh, so part two is, is done. That was the, the things that stood out the most to me. Uh, I was really proud of his wife, and she said, "I ain't moving. This is I'm gonna sit right here. This is my this is my milk table, and uh, you know I'm gonna stick the hound after you if you step foot on my property." It, it just feisty, and I love that. Um, and it's good to see people coming around to his aid now, and coming around to, to see the things that that are important. You know, it, it takes that sometimes. Things don't seem so pressing until they are, and there's only a few people who who see what's coming. You know, the watcher, the watchman on the wall, you know. So, look forward to part three. And uh, this is Pathos with Patriot Axe Freedom Radio, watching the classic Sweden movie Midwinter Duel. See you guys all next time. Therein lies the road to war, because those voices don't speak for the rest of us. You and I know and do not believe that life is so dear and peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery. Moses have told the children of Israel to live in slavery under the Pharaoh. But Christ have reduced the cross. Should the patriots at Concord Bridge have thrown down their guns and refused to fire the shot heard around the world? The martyrs of history were not and our honored dead gave their lives to stop the advance of the Nazis, didn't die in vain. Where then is the road to peace? It's a simple answer after all. You and I have the courage to say to our enemies, there is a price we will not pay. There